Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it is time for part two of the Monday Q&A, so let's get to it. Your thoughts on calisthenics and bodyweight training. In short, calisthenics and bodyweight training is fantastic for beginners because it can build a lot of core strength, a lot of stability, everything you're doing is a basic compound movement. The problem is that the more advanced you get and the longer you're training with it, you start running into problems because not every muscle can be adequately developed this way and evenly balanced. Now you can build good lats, you can build good biceps off of it because if you can do 10 one-arm chin-ups, you're gonna get a lot of development there. The problem you run into is that eventually you run out of ways to stimulate more growth because you're gonna to get to a point where you can do 50 dips with no problem and you're just doing high reps, almost cardio for these muscles. Same thing, when you get to a point where you can do one arm, one leg push-ups, you're still getting a lot less stimulation on the pecs, triceps, delts than you would from a proper bench press. And you're going to run into problems with the legs because realistically, the leg strength required to do even a one leg squat isn't that high compared to someone who does heavy barbell squatting. You're going to surpass the strength levels of that within a year to where you're going to get decent development. So you're going to end up with very large muscle imbalances. But for someone in that first year of training who doesn't have access to weights, I think it can be good. And I think that it's a good supplement to your training. But you're ultimately going to limit your strength and development with it. You can only get so far with it. And I know you guys are going to point out people like Hannibal for King and others who do tons and tons of this. You got to remember, he has to do a lot more volume to do that. And while the guy is really lean, due to calories in, calories out, genetics, other factors, his overall development, the amount of effort he's having to put in to be where he is, is in terms of total time he has to put in is lower than what it needs to be. Someone could get that same level of muscular development with less years of work and probably less hours per week on a proper weightlifting program. So it's just not that efficient and you just run out of ways to control the resistance and you're forced to just try to find new ways to slowly add resistance by changing the technique and other things and it's a, it's really a less efficient more difficult approach to reach the same goal ultimately but i think it's fine for supplemental and i think it's fine for uh, beginners all right next question how to train and still keep my waist small to keep the x symmetry i started your novice program recently and my coach tells me that my squat and deadlifts will make my waist large and this is from a subscriber who is a female physique competitor. It's a bit of a myth that you're going to see a great deal of hypertrophy around your waist from squats and deadlifts, unless you're doing deep breathing squats where you're pushing your stomach out. But that stomach out can be reversed by doing stomach vacuums, which will train your waist to get smaller. Now you need to remember all these muscles of the core are relatively small, thin muscles. Most of your abdominal area is due to organs and visceral fat. You're not going to be able to add two or three inches to your waist through hypertrophy, no matter how strong you possibly get and how much weight you lift. Now, if you go from being a rank novice as a female to hitting top level female powerlifting numbers where you could compete at the elite level, yeah, you might add up to one inch of muscle to your waistline. But that's probably unrealistic if you're not training to reach that level of performance. You're not really going to see a noticeable difference there. The only thing I would be concerned with is thickening up the obliques too much. So if you're already doing heavy squats and deadlifts regularly, I would advise not adding, if you're a physique competitor, any direct oblique work to further stimulate those because that could make your way slightly wider, which is something you may want to avoid. You're getting enough strength stimulation there probably from the squats and deadlifts. Now, if you wanted to go for a world-class squat and deadlift and powerlifting, I would advise you go ahead and train those muscles additionally. All right, next question. What is your opinion on neuroendocrine response associated with heavy lifting? Do you think that hormones that stimulate growth are released more so from heavy compound movements taken to failure as opposed to the type of training you advocate? Or is the whole hormone burst theory just well-articulated bro science? This is well-articulated bro science. All of the research and studies that we have in the meta-analysis show that these hormone spikes and releases from training don't actually facilitate further muscle growth. They don't help you. It's a nice theory because people say, well, hey, all of these hormones, when we inject massive doses of them way higher than what the human body is capable of producing, people gain muscle faster. Undisputed. 
So the idea is that that little tiny micro spike that you get from training might also induce a tiny little bit of muscle growth. But when we studied it, it doesn't. When we do long-term studies over 15 or 20 weeks, there seems to be no real correlation there with these hormone responses that you're inducing from the type of training you're talking about using a certain specific training style to cause hormone release and muscle growth. And this is something I've covered in longer videos. I'm kind of surprised someone's asking me this. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I will talk to you in part three, but let me give you guys a bicep shot first.